Hey guys, welcome back. It's Dotterin. Well, we're in bases, and somewhere around here, I thought we had my eastern base, but I'm not seeing it. Did you see it? No? Oh, you weren't looking. I'm going to stop for a second. Go back and check out the first couple seconds of the video. Did you see it? Did it look sort of familiar? Yeah, that's right. I didn't leave Southern yet. Sorry, guys. But seriously, we are going to my Northern base today. I just had to get over to this Southern base and just show you a couple of last things that I did off camera. Things that I said that we really should have did and I really didn't want to take the time in an entire video. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes and just show you how we finished off this base. First of all, more storage. So now there is definitely order to the chaos that used to be in here. See that? This one's empty. Yep. And then, okay. All right. So that was problem number one solved. But what else did I do? I did a couple more things. I had commented that that jumping cow came back because we had gone into a, uh, a backup and I had wanted to get that cow. So I went out and I brought that cow and the cow that had been hanging around over by our zombie thing brought them back, bred them once, waited around a bit, and I just finished breeding it a second time so I can get my even number again, which will make breeding a lot easier. And then I had noticed the pigs, and I had commented that, oh yeah, there are no pigs here. Well, over there are a bunch of planes. So I brought two pigs back, bred them once, waited a bit, bred them again, and now I've got my even number of pigs. And then you, how the heck? I don't I. I don't know how you guys do that. One, two, three, four, five, and then the baby is six. Yeah, I don't know. Somehow, um, someday I'm just going to have to sit up tight somewhere and just watch and see how the heck they're able to get out of that pen. Um, it might be because this this fence is touching this, but it shouldn't be that way. I, I don't know. All right, and then the last thing I did was back to our main project at this base. Um Yes, dude, yes, dude, you're dying. Oh, look. Um, I wanted to do one more thing to make sure that uh, we could do everything we could do over here totally safe. So here's what I did um, before I show it to you. First of all, I went back to this kind of more 3D look because I just, I just thought that was a little cooler. Okay? And all I did is I found a location of that chest that's up there. And I just brought a corridor down so that we can access this chest. And I even made a little little step up so that I don't have to be in creep uh, so that we can get into this chest. I'll take these that I got and toss them in there. Okay? Um, this works incredibly well if you're working in the main base. As soon as you see nighttime come, uh, take the underground tunnel down here just find something to do down here. You know, get yourself some lava, do some little bit of caving in this area if you want. Just, just hang out in this area until you see this thing go uh, lit, and then, um, then come on up because you will be surprised how many zombies you'll see up here. And I've done it oh five or six times already, and um, it got to something like between thirty and forty zombies at a whack, um, and that was just. That was just one go at it. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. And again, that flesh, uh, it does poison you a little bit. Um, I think it's a weakness. Um, but, hey, that's not bad at all. Okay? All right, guys. Well, that'll, that'll bring us up to speed now. 
So now what we're going to do is trek back to the city so that I can show you the eastern base. But I'm going to pause it here, uh, you know, magic of video, um, and I'll meet up with you again back at the city. Okay, so let's give it, let's give it some magic words. Okay, you ready? Abracadabra. Oh. Oh. Did it work? Yeah. Yeah. There's the clock tower. We're back in the city. I love the power of video. Well, I've already used my F3 key to tell me that my A gate is the one that is facing east. And if I show you, we are empty-handed of anything except for a compass. This is how we do these ventures. Um, this particular base is quite a distance. So look, it's daylight now, and we will definitely be arriving by nightfall. So it is, it is a lot farther away than the other two bases. Okay. Um, I am going to show you something on the other side of this gate that one of my daughters made that's kind of wild. Uh, we'll just kind of see it in passing as we go out, but let's check it out. Okay. Uh, you come through this little area, and before I show it to you, let's kind of get in front of it. And here it is. Is that wild or what? It's like a Japanese pagoda tower. See that? She's still working on the inside, so I won't really go inside yet, but wow. This is what happens when you have a person that's got some serious artistic talent in this game. All right, I need to take out this piece, put it in. Um, I gave her this chunk of land outside the city because under it is a darkroom mob trap that I helped make her. Uh, you see this tower here and a little bit of the roof? Uh, that's actually her house, her plot. So then she got this extra piece because we were doing this and I didn't want people to be digging out here and screwing up her mob trap. Well, anyways, if we look at this, uh, we need to kind of, according to this compass, be heading in a sort of a, a southeasterly direction. It is straight east. And we've had that conversation about why, why these compasses seem a little bit strange in this game. So we are just going to kind of keep to this. Um, oh, that wasn't good. And eventually... We were going to find this place. Well, while we're talking, or while we're taking our hike, um, you can see what happened. This is an area that uh, really got abandoned. You can see here, this was one of those exposed dungeons that happened to be caved in from uh, the desert. So I thought that was kind of wild. All right, let's go straight up here. We're going to venture through every biome just to get to this place. Um, when I started to figure out, you know, that I wanted to do these bases, this was, uh, what? I, I don't know if I did this one third or if I did this one fourth. I wanted to do this one third in the series um, because I actually have two that are based upon this. Um, but I had done it for different reasons. Um, here's somebody else's. Remember I said other users were starting to venture out. So that was their their beginnings of a base. I don't think they are quite done with it yet. Um, so I, yeah, I wanted to split that up. So uh, we'll do the western base after this one. Um, but this is one of two bases that was um, based upon one of the Minecraft villages, the little towns that are automatically generated by uh, Minecraft. Now, these villages, when they're created, are also populated with little uh, computer-controlled people. They're called NPCs, non-player characters. Um, these characters occupy the houses. They kind of live in the houses. And um, then they had introduced the ability that they could trade with you, so you could just kind of walk up to them and right click on them and then they would offer you a trade and if you had what it was they were looking to trade then um you know you would make the trade with them and then i don't know if you had to do it maybe two times or three times but um over time they would begin to like you 
and there's actually a little likeness rating built into them uh, and it's on a per user basis so they might really like you but really hate somebody else um, but if their like rating was high enough for you then you would notice that even the same villager um, in their little their little trade panel would actually be allowed to have a different kind of a trade and I believe each one can have up to six different kinds of trades um, you know some are incredibly ludicrous you know something that you would never normally do like there was one uh, I think one of the villagers that I was toying around with was uh, they wanted to trade for a diamond uh, chest plate which is pretty good but they wanted 10 emeralds in order to make the trade now you know if you're in creative that's nothing right because you've got access to as many as you want but try to find emeralds in live action survival play um, the wiki says that they really only grow in hold on oh pardon me that they only grow in um, extreme hills biomes well and then you know kind of up high not down low so you gotta kind of be up in one of the extreme hills digging down in and it would take you quite a while to come across 10 emeralds um, so that would be you know definitely an example of a, you know a trade that's a good trade I mean you know you're getting diamond chest plate out of it but um, that's quite a hefty price tag but others are are actually you know not too bad like there's one that says you know a certain chunk of meat like you know give me give me five steaks and I'll give you um, an iron sword or or even even a diamond sword for maybe ten steaks or something like that um, so in that regard you know if you if you've got cows and you're raising them you got a nice chunk of cows I mean it doesn't take very long to to get a lot of steak or pork or chicken which I've seen you know, all, all the villagers are asking for um, you know one I've seen them where they ask for paper or they ask for reeds which again you know it doesn't take you very long to uh, uh, you know grow a few reeds smash them into the paper um, gotta come over here. Yeah. Uh, traveling in Minecraft isn't so bad um, these uh, jungles these jungles are kind of nuts um, because they are very very grown um, living in a jungle is even cooler because um, the longer you're in one the, m the more time these vines have to grow you know when you first come to a jungle these vines are kind of short but the longer you're there, my God, these vines grow all over the place. Um, uh, you'll see an example of that at this village because um, you know it's a village, and in Minecraft, villages only only spawn in two types of biomes. They spawn in um, deserts like this one, and they spawn in plains. And uh, the two bases that I have that are based on these are plains villages. Um, and this particular one happened to butt up against um, a little bit of a jungle as well. So you're going to see see something in here that we've got that uh, the vines are pretty plentiful. But you can tell we've been here. I mean, look at these vines. They're, they're already grown all the way to the ground. So that you know, that's proof that people have been here. But let's let's talk more about this proof that people were here. So you go to these villages that are uh, you know naturally spawned in the Minecraft world, okay? Um, but that's all that spawns are the village structures and um, a few villagers. Well, the problem is, uh, now here look at this. We're just talking about villages, and here's one right here. Um, the problem is that this is exactly how they spawn, just the buildings and a couple villagers. If no real people are in the area, then they're perfectly safe. But the instant people enter into the chunk areas near them, then um, 
then they have a bad possibility. And the bad possibility is the fact that zombies can come in here. And I don't know what. Wow. I don't know what was going on there. Look at that. Oh, it's a ravine. Okay. So here's an example of a village. Well, here's here. This, this might be perfect. Um, so here I am, you know, venturing out, trying to find a new place to have, have a base. And this is what I found. It was a village, all right, but it was deserted. Every building had lost its door, and there wasn't a villager to be found. I mean, look at this. Look at these weirdnesses. Okay. Um, now, it is getting to be night, and if I die, we're going to be in a pickle, so I want to keep moving. But there's an example of that, that problem I was talking about, because... Um, If you are there, if, if humans are there, and then nighttime comes, like is coming right now, um, what happens are the bad guys come up. And for villagers, the specific bad, bad guy are the zombies. And so what would happen is that uh, the zombies would come and actually what they call siege, like in, you know, in large groups, just come and start to attack the villages. And one of the things they did, um, you know, in a recent version, was to have the ability to break down wooden doors. Well, did you, if you've ever seen a village, um, all of the buildings are created using wooden doors. So, uh, you know, the, the villagers freak out and they, they run inside their homes and they close their doors for protection. Well, these zombies can come in and find the buildings that they're living in and break the doors down, get in there, and then they start attacking the villagers. But instead of killing them, they turn them into zombie villagers. And it's kind of funny. You know, the if you've ever seen a villager, they've got these funky little long bulbous noses. Well, if you've ever seen a... Um, zombie with a long bulbous nose then you've just found yourself a um a zombie villager and uh that's evidently what had happened even the one that we just saw back there a little ways was um already looted you know the the zombies had already come through they had already attacked and there was nothing left um so the village that I came across that we're going to see hopefully and very soon, I'm almost starving here, um, was the exact same thing. I had come across a nice, it was a smaller village, um, but, you know, I had never done a village before. So I thought, okay, we're going we're gonna to work with this um, kind of neat, smaller village. Um, but just like we saw, the entire thing was deserted. And I'm like, well, aren't there supposed to be people here? Um Ooh, 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 no, 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 oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I so don't want to die. Stop jumping, that might help. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh man, I'm almost, almost about to die here. Uh, oh, now I am dying. Oh, this isn't going to be good. I thought I should have came upon my village already and I oh man guess what guys <laughs> nope we didn't do it we did not do it all right uh where did we come back to oh hello guess what guys I wanted to remember where I was so I had come to the village and I forgot I had slept in a bed so guess what we're already here. Here we are. This is the village. Well, that's cool because it'll help us uh, do this. Okay. Now I'm getting some chunk errors because it, it teleported us. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna log off and log back in real quick, so that we lose. See that? We lose the chunk errors. As you move around, Minecraft tries to help out by preloading chunks that are, you know, out there in the distance, so that by the time you get up to them. Um, they're all set so all right so here we are now normally we would have come in that entrance we would have came in from that direction okay 
and come in over there. So um, it would have brought us along this little pathway. So uh, I'll come over here because then we'll talk a little bit about what we have here too. Um, first of all, you can see the fence is almost identical. Um, this time you notice I've got I've got these two out here again, which I think is what I had done out at the uh, southern base too. Well, to combat that, I had come along here, and every now and then I put just a few ladders so that you could actually get up here if you wanted to. You see? Um, so that was one, one difference. Uh, the placement of my torches at this base is a little different. Uh, each area here has got four torches, so that really lights it up. And then if we actually come outside, I didn't see any bad guys, so we should be good. Um, I also place torches now and then on the posts on the outside, which throws off a little bit more light on the outside. Welcome to Dodderin's Eastern Base. So here we are. Okay, so let's see. We've only got about nine more minutes, so we'll just take a quick look to see what we've got here. Um, so I didn't do anything special to the village itself. Um, like I said, when I got here, it was deserted, so I had to put doors on the buildings. Um, you know, I didn't know a lot about villages, so I thought, okay, you know, I, I had to put this fence up. I had to put the fence up. I had to put torches all around so that it was all lit up so that no zombies could get in here. And then I put doors on the buildings. And then I thought, okay, now it's just a waiting game. So while I waited, I continued working on some of the elements that I needed to make this a base hoping that, you know, as I was working, eventually villagers would spawn. Well, they weren't coming, um, and I didn't understand why until later. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So this area here was actually a little pond that, had, that actually existed uh, right in this area. Uh, I kind of cleaned it up. I widened it out a little bit. This is my fishing pond. There I've got reeds over there, so it doubles as a reed garden as well. This is a neat area where uh, I can give picnics, little picnic meals. I've got this little chest over here that's kind of hidden away. I don't know if there's anything in it. You know, whatever whatever meal I decide to serve the people, I can put all the stuff in here so I'm not carrying it on me. And there's, you know, spots for four people. And it's kind of cool. I toss out the entities and then, you know, there will be like four steaks just sitting here on the table and the people can take them, take them and eat. Um, what else do we got? Uh, here we've got our sheep that I initially needed for, you know, my bed and then uh, paintings and things like that. And then you can see we were toying around with dyes and stuff like that. Over here also for when we have people coming, um, you get a flint and steel, you light it up, and you get yourself a little campfire. Um, one of the things that's been changed is that if you get too close to fire, you'll light up on fire. So I tossed in this little thing bit of water just in case you find yourself lit up on fire. Uh, all right, what else? Here I got some chickens that I tossed in because we needed some chickens. And then over here we've got um, one of the gardens that came with the town, came with the village. I added in the lily pads just to make harvesting a little easier, but that, that was part of it. Here's my pen for the cows. Um, we've got a small little tree garden here for oak, uh, using something similar to what you saw at the northern base. I didn't do that specifically for a reason, I just thought it kind of looked cool. Okay, and again, another natural garden that came with it. Then you've got the village pieces, um, the village structures that were here, again, with their doors. I, I modified the staircases just because I thought that looked better. Um, but one of the things we're going to do in here is change it back. And you heard a dude. You heard a dude, so you're going to see it. Here's the church. Uh, the church is one of the structures I don't believe ever had a door uh, because of the way that it's got the stair built in. So I don't think it ever had a door. A um, couple small houses. And I want to see if we can actually find it. There were two villagers living in this village. And I'm not saying it. Now, see, somebody was living in here. Um, this one here. Moxie Loxie. So one of my users had visited and kind of took up a little bit of residence. She was helping me to do a couple things in the town. Um, where are our guests? I can hear them. I'm, I'm going to go in here. This is the library building. Uh, you know, it's one of the, the common structures that can be built. But I slight. Oh, here it is. Here's one guy. Um, close the door so you're safe, dude. 
uh, it had bookcases up high and stuff. If you've ever seen one of these in a real village, I just retooled the inside to become uh, my enchanting room. Um, using the space I had available, I was able to get a perfect 30 out of here. I raised the window because, like I said, if you ever find a, an actual library in a village, you'll see there's bookcases up here where this window is. Over here in the corner, the villager jumped up on top of a little potion stand that I created. Okay, so I, I kept the same village uh, structure. I just retooled it for my uses. A well that most of these villages have in common. Another small house. Uh, a couple more gardens that are standard. Here's my other villager. And here's what I was talking about. You come up to a villager, you right click on him. And here, oh, here he is. So if you happen to have 16 emeralds on you, you can trade them and get a diamond chest plate. Um, again, I think that's a little heftier. Once you start trading, these arrows turn on, and your villagers can give you more than one possibility. Uh, and then here is my last one. Now, this one here, again, I didn't modify this. <coughs> this one here actually had carrots growing here. The only thing I added were my little touches of the workbenches on the corner, the torches, and... Uh, the lily pads, you know, the, the wood, the dirt, and whatever crops were here, were the ones that would naturally spawn in. Since this is a plains, um, the animal that I kept finding tons of were pigs. So the biggest pen I have in this base is specifically for pigs, and I think you can understand why. Uh, they have become my primary food source. Um, if I come to the top of this stairs here, Okay, this building was actually uh, only one small house, and if I remember correctly, I think it was this one. I needed a base for my own self, and I decided if I kept this building, oh, dog, stop, without doors, then uh, the villagers won't use them, but I'll have it for myself, okay? Um, so really, this is, the, this is all that I have to call my own in this little building, okay? I just added an, an, an add-on, and then um, uh, there are houses that you'll see in villages that have ladders that come up onto a roof, you know, a little square roof on a small house. Um, I just spanned it over to make this little kind of a bridge so that I can kind of look over the whole town, as it were, as well, okay? All right, well, one of the last things I want to show you before um, I put a cap on this episode is out back here. Uh, I had said I had gotten here and there were no no villagers, and um, I wanted villagers. Uh, oh, here you can see I have jungle wood, because look at this fence. This fence is all jungle wood, and look, there's a jungle right there. So I went out and got enough... Dog, stop! Enough uh, jungle wood so that I could grow my own. And really, I think I took this tree down like uh, three times you know big big tree three times to get enough wood to make the fence that goes all the way around the space well here's a little shrine rest in peace eight scared villagers will be missed well i had said i had gotten here and there were no villagers so i put the fence around it i put doors around it and i started adding all my own goodies waiting for villagers and look at this one. There's all carrots. Um, they never came. So then I was like, okay, what happened? So I had to do some research. Uh, oh, I've seen you already. Um, I want the other guy. And so I went to the wiki to do some research to find out. Here he is. Um, what's going on with these villagers? Hey, dude, what do you have to offer? Okay, now look, he's not too bad. If you give me one emerald, I'll give you six pork chops. That, I mean, that's not too bad. It's not too hard to find an emerald. Finding eight or ten emeralds, well, that's a little different. Come to find out that um, I had to bring them to this village. So you saw that other village that we, we found on our way here. Um, if we would have found villagers there, we could have tried to bring a villager to this village, um, 
you know, and, and it, number one, it's not very easy. They're not like other mobs where you can kind of just push into them and then they'll move. Even if you hit them to kind of push them off, you know, you hit them too many times, you'll kill them. Um, plus, you'll screw up that like, likeness reading, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, so probably one of the easier ways to do it uh, is to use a railway, you know, build a railroad track from that village to this village, and then, uh, you know, put, put you know, if, if that torch was the villager, you know, maybe put a track right there, put a minecart on it, and then nudge the villager into the minecart. Then you got to push that minecart over to where your real track is, and then zoom them on their way. Um, there is another way, and in our next episode, that's what I'd like to talk to you about, okay? All right, guys, well, welcome to my eastern base. We're going to learn more about what this base has to offer in our next episode, all right? Okay, so until we talk again, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.